This will mean that there will be many more older individuals and that the impact of our aging society on Social Security and Medicare, on the one hand, will be much greater than previously imagined. And the impact on our society structure, on the other hand, will also be much greater. Sure, there are challenges. There are some really tough things that we're going to have to deal with. But there are opportunities. Having more productive older individuals with more life experience and the wisdom that comes with age is a tremendous opportunity. It's been shown time and time again that in intergenerational programs, these older individuals can be exceptionally helpful to younger individuals, particularly children. We need to break down the barriers in our society that prevent older individuals from being productive members. We need to break down the financial barriers that sometimes keep people out of the workforce. We need to develop educational programs in a lifelong way so that people can constantly learn about how to deal with the changes in the technological environment so they can deal with changes in the work site. We need to make opportunities in the structure of our society so that individuals of different generations can work together more effectively. We have an age-segregated society. My friends tend to be my age. Your friends tend to be your age. We tend to deal only with our own generation outside of the family, perhaps. We need to break down these silos to have a truly intergenerational society. If we can do that, it'll be more productive and more equitable. If you can imagine a society that has more walkers than strollers, how would you plan for that society? How do you begin the transition from a more functional life course in the United States to support a productive and equitable aging society? That's a key target of our policy deliberations.